Hey, what up everybody? Hope everybody's having a good year so far, bringing 2017 in with a bang. This is Randall with Roll Call Tech, and this is going to be a 2017 server rack tour. Uh, changes I've made since uh, my last video in August. Um, one thing I have done is I've condensed everything into one of my closets in my spare bedroom. So giving me the inability to close these doors right here and get these things out of sight and out of mind when I have guests over. So we'll go from top to bottom and uh, talk it through. So I got two Acer monitors. Um, this one Acer monitor I've had for many years. Uh, it's a 17 inch monitor, VGA. Got it hooked up to a two port KVM switch, which is plugged up to these two servers down here. I'll get to those in a little bit. Went on eBay for 30 bucks, purchased another identical Acer monitor. Um, got that plugged up directly to my Dell R610 server. Finally got around to installing VMware ESXi 6.0 on there. Haven't got around to messing around with uh, VMware 6.5 but um, that's going to be one of my plans in the future. So, got two monitors hooked up. I've got the Dell R610. Moving on down, probably wondering what this ugly thing is, is, is this is an Acer Aspire Pentium dual core, two gigs of RAM, 250 gigabyte hard drive. I was about to throw it away, decided to install, well, decided to make a couple purchases so I went on Amazon picked up two of these things put them inside of that and installed PFSense on it so that is my PFSense router I actually recorded the video when I was doing this whole thing for the video footage and uh, yeah my video footage got deleted so that video series never came to light but the way how it works is um, you have one you got the two networks uh, cards inside of that machine. You install PFSense. One network card is coming in from my cable modem. The other one is going to my um, switch. And then my connections are dispersed out from there. So I got another switch in my other side of the house where all my gaming computers are and everything else is over there. And then I got Wi Fi being handled by my Netgear N600 router which gives me 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz wireless inside the house. And I just turned that router into a wireless access point. So everything is being, all my routing is being handled by this. This PFSense router is working awesome. Uh, if you have an old computer that you're looking to ditch, um, just download the PFSense ISO, install PFSense, get one extra network card in there and just give it a shot and see if you like it. It's been working actually great for me. It's been a hell of a lot better than my N600 doing all of my routing for all the computers and wireless and stuff. It was just getting bogged down. Things were slowing down. I switched to this, and it is running awesome. Moving on down, my two Pride and Joy servers, uh, workstations that I love. These are my two Dell T7500s. This server over here on the right is my daily driver on 24-7. It does all my file storage, it does uh, my Plex server, it does basically all my backups. That thing is loaded down with hard drives, um, so all my file storage is pretty much handled with that one. That one has two um, Xeon X5660, no, X5650 processors in it. Those are 2.66 gigahertz processors, hex core, so that means I got 24 threads in there. 48 gigs of RAM. I got a shit ton of storage. I can't remember. I think I got 8 terabytes of redundant storage in there. And um, that thing, I just love it. My new one, purchased it on Amazon and purchased it on eBay for $175. I ended up putting, uh, upgrading and putting the X5670s in there. And those are two 2.93 gigahertz processors. And those are hex core processors. So 24 threads. So it's actually more powerful than this one. But has 48 gigs of RAM in it, a couple hard drives in it, has an SSD boot drive in it, and um, this was actually the computer that I put my GTX 1060 in and did the gaming benchmarks in. I actually left all the games that I did on that benchmark video, I left them on there, so in the event my gaming rig took a shit on me, all I gotta do is just plop my GTX 1060 back in there, pull it off of this rack, and just carry on with my gaming experience. 
UPS's I ended up purchasing a second UPS uh, because um, that UPS right there the um, APC XS 1000 uh, running all this was a little bit much for it so I ended up um, purchasing a XS uh, 1500 so I can uh, spread the load out moving over here I got a shelf inside this closet and uh, I got my Dell 490 uh, hooked up just got a network cable and a power cable hooked up to that and that's still running VMware ESXi 6.0 however I did move most of my virtual machines over onto my Dell R610 so that's not on at the moment down below that I don't know if you could see it but those are two Panasonic Toughbooks those are the CF30s Core 2 Duos um, those are my little go-to laptops whenever I have any troubleshooting needs or anything like that. Um, they got 4 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, they each have 120 gigabyte SSDs. The Panasonic Toughbooks, I love them. You can pick those up cheap on eBay. Uh, the reason why I like Panasonic Toughbooks so much, I'm going to let you in on something. The reason why my channel is called Roll Call Tech is because I am a full-time police officer and all of this stuff is pretty much just my hobby. So technology is my hobby, but being a cop is my full-time job. I have a uh, Panasonic Toughbook in my police car. The military has been using them for many, many years. Uh, and if you want to get down to it, these things are so rugged. I mean, you can drive over them with a car. And in a life or death situation, life or death situation, you can actually use it as a blunt, for we blunt force weapon and kill somebody with it. But I'm digressing here, and that's a totally different series. So... Panasonic Toughbooks, those are just my little grab-and-go laptops. If I ever need to help somebody out with something, I grab one of those, and I can load up whatever I need to load up, uh, burn ISOs and all that stuff. Moving on up, I just got spare parts, spare network cards, cables, network cables, uh, hard drives, RAM sticks. Uh, over here, I got power supplies, hard drives, SAS drives, laptop hard drives. Just uh, my shelf o parts is what I call it. Moving on up to the next one, I have, uh, you know, I got a DVD VCR combo. Uh, I got a Blu-ray player up here. Got more spare parts inside this container. As you can see, I got Noctua fans in there that I'm not even using. Uh, this thing right here, I'll zoom in on this. This thing is pretty cool. This is my uh, OB High 200 Google Voice. Um, phone system. If you have a Gmail account, you can go to voice.google.com and actually get a Google Voice phone number, like an actual phone number with your area code on it. And with that little box, um, you can pick them up on Amazon real cheap. You can um, program it and get a phone, and you have a phone number so you can call somebody with, all for free. So after you purchase this little box, pretty much you can have free phone service in your house off of your internet. The only downside to it is 911 service. If you dial 911, 911 will not know where you are. So just keep that in mind. I think you can purchase like an add-on service off the OB High uh, website for like $15 a year, which will give you 911 service. So you can dial 911 and 911 would actually know where you are, but like I said, I'm a police officer, and in my other room I have a police radio, so all I have to do is literally make it to that radio, turn it on, and I'm talking directly to the dispatchers. So that's a perk for being a cop, I guess. Everything else sucks. But moving on up, got more uh, spare parts. Got most of my video camera stuff up there. I got a VHO movie um, action cam. My new purchase uh, I got for Christmas was a GoPro Hero. Uh, camera and I've been playing around with that got more spare parts joysticks stuff like that If you're wondering what all these red lights on this power strip were Those are docking stations for my ham radios, which I got like five or six of them and my favorite go-to radios are the Baofeng UV5R um, Radios you can pick them up on Amazon. I think for like 30 35 dollars and They're four watts of power um, They can run two meter uh, 70 centimeter band on the ham frequencies as well as running FRS, GMRS, um, the marine frequencies. Um, the legalities on using them on those frequencies is eh, probably illegal, but I'm not, I don't work for the FCC. So, uh, but if you are interested in becoming a ham radio operator, I am a ham radio operator. 
uh, technician class. So all that consists of is you taking a 35 question test, paying $15, and you are going to be licensed ham radio operator for 10 years if you pass that test, which is a very easy test. So got those hooked up. And so those are just char up there charging. I got most of them, the ones that aren't on the docking stations there inside of my vehicles. So I'm nowhere, I'm, I'm always close to a radio. Moving on, got some of my thrift store finds and some spare networking parts, some spare routers, some old stuff, network switches. Uh, this right here is a Netgear N900 router that I picked up for $10 from a thrift store. Got a pair of Turtle Beach headsets that I haven't tested out, but got that for $10. Got some extra SATA cables, uh, a whole bunch of stuff up there. Just all my spare parts. I got everything condensed into this closet. So that's pretty much it for my little server rack tour. So just wanted to condense everything, get it out of sight, out of mind. So if uh, I have company coming over, literally all I do is just close these doors and everything's done. Nobody gets to see all this. So anyways, but I just wanted to do a 2017 tour of what I got going on right now. So I hope everybody has a good new year. I hope everybody has a safe new year. Let's bring 2017 in with a bang and I want everybody to have a good one. So all right guys, with that said, this is it for the uh, server rack tour. This is Randall with Roll Call Tech. I'm out.